Thank you so much, Leon, for that wonderful introduction. I'm here to share with you today our vision for revolutionizing female reproductive health care by bringing together teams of clinicians, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, biologists, together even with patients, so that we can bring mesofluidic technologies developed at MIT directly into the care of patients. We start with an observation that the maternal instinct is a force of nature. You cannot fight it. The most calm, collected, organized, professional woman can become a bundle of irrational emotion when she can't get pregnant or she has diseases that af affect her fertility. So at MIT, we decided to focus on two of the most challenging problems, those in fertility preservation or egg freezing, and those in bringing personalized therapy to certain gynecology conditions that afflict about 10% of women. We started on this almost 15 years ago. So this technology developed over a long time. We started when a local gynecology surgeon, Keith Isaacson, approached me saying there were no options for the 23-year-old he had just operated on for her 10th surgery. What can he do for the patients who can't get pregnant or get relief from the pain and suffering of the gynecology diseases? So we got a foundation grant and since then started working together. Since then, we published seminal papers on endometriosis molecular classification and won a number of awards. Let me share with you the technologies that we're now ready to bring into the clinic that have been percolating for all these years. One is in the problem of egg freezing. The issues are uh, a graduate student today who's worried about will she be able to get pregnant and wants to freeze her eggs because she goes and works at Facebook, which has amazing fertility benefits. Uh, will it even be reliable? Will she even have access if she's working remote to a clinic? And furthermore, if she has a disease, will she get holistic care? So what uh, we decided uh, is the huge challenge is that so much of the process is manual. A reproductive endocrinologist manually takes the eggs and puts them into a cryopreservation fluid and then freezes them. So this is highly susceptible to operator error. And it's also very expensive to do this. So we want to reduce the cost and make it more accessible. So we're bringing technologies from Scott Manalis's lab where he has made tremendous advances in technologies to manipulate individual cells, measure them, characterize them. And we're now bringing this kind of technology into uh, manipulating the egg so we can automate the egg freezing process, thereby making fertility preservation accessible to all of the light blue areas on this map and also reducing the cost and time required to go through the process. But if a woman is healthy and she can freeze her eggs and get pregnant later, that doesn't help her if she has endometriosis or adenomyosis, two very common gynecology diseases characterized by having the uterine lining growing outside the lining of the uterus, either in the wall of the uterus or in the abdominal cavity, causing terrible pain, infertility, anemia. So we've been pulling together approaches where we actually go in and characterize how patients are different what is molecular basis for differences in patients? What are some of the other differences in patients that might let us bring a more personalized care to these patients? And what we were told over and over again by pharma companies is that we needed approaches that would let us represent the patient in our lab to test new therapies. So after characterizing some molecular differences between groups of patients, we started to build new tissue engineering technologies to actually grow individual patients that we know something about in the lab. This is showing some proprietary tissue engineering approaches that we developed where we can grow the not, not only the patient organoids, but a more complex model of several cell types representing the lesion in the lab. Um, it's one thing to grow these in standard kind of incubator format in a 3D culture, as we show here, using some biomaterials we developed, but it's another thing to have them be more representative of a lesion by having blood vessels and nerves and so on. So we've teamed up with Professor Roger Cam, who has develop some beautiful technologies to make microvessel networks grow in microfluidic devices. And what we're doing now 
is making these a much more robust approach to go to a larger scale so we can grow an actual lesion and so we can simulate a patient's menstrual cycle in the lab. This is building on technologies out of a big DARPA program we led for seven years. And what I'm showing you here in this movie, these are onboard pumps. These are tiny microfluidic pumps that can serve like a little beating heart to circulate fluid through that kind of vascular network. Not only that, it can circulate the fluid, but it can then allow cycles of hormones to mimic the menstrual cycle. So what you saw were the pumps. Now you see us building the patient. This is bringing that tissue engineering approach directly onto this chip so that we can keep it going for weeks at a time and study the outcome. So we look forward to talking with you at the end of the uh, session today about how uh, we can make this outcome shown here. This is actually my niece who has endometriosis and she had a baby and we hope we can make this happen for all who want it. I look forward to seeing you.